Okay, so I've been shredding my hardtail quite a lot lately, showing you what it's capable of, what you should do to push it to its limits and all that jazz, but there's a few mistakes involved that I've seen a lot of other people do when riding a hardtail. And so I'm gonna pick out all the ones that are most common and I kind of do them as well. So I'm gonna show you a few of these and give you a few pointers on how to eliminate all these mistakes. Let's do it. One of the biggest mistakes that you can do is having the wrong body position when shredding one of these hardtails. I've seen a lot, I've seen a lot of riders out there rigid as a rake. Yep, it's true. Everyone rides real stiff, bit nervous of what's coming up because you're riding a hardtail, you can feel every single bump in the trail. You want to be a little bit more flamboyant when you're riding a hardtail. You want to let that bike move around. You want to let your body move around that bike. You want to dance on it because you are actually dancing on the trail because you're feeling every single bump out there, especially when you're riding a hardtail. So the best way to get your body to move around that bike is lowering that saddle as low as possible. It's gonna help your body movement way, way better around the four quadrants of your bike. On the front, I've got 140 mil of travel, but I've got 400 mil of travel right here in my arms. So you wanna use your arms as much as possible as well to absorb all that impact, especially when it gets a bit rough in front of you. You wanna let your body bounce around a lot. You wanna look ahead spot your line, take up all that, you know, work your body. Trust me, you're gonna work and you're gonna, it's gonna pay off, especially when you're riding a rough trail. Right, when it comes to breaking on a hard tail, it's quite hard because you're gonna try and find grip, especially when it comes to rough section. And like, look at this, this is S-like turns, bank turns all the way down here, quite steep, quite technical. So. To be braking in this, you don't want to be braking on the hard stuff because you're not going to get enough braking power. You're not going to slow down enough because your back wheel's going to be bouncing all over the place. It's going to lose grip. And especially when the rocks get wet, it gets horribly slippery and you can't slow down. So you've got to brake before all of this. And then you want to feather your brakes coming through these sections. But what you want to find is little pockets of little grippy areas where you can grab on the brakes a little bit to slow you down a little bit. I mean, what I mean not grabbing, but you want to modulate it, you want to go in slightly to slow you down a lot quicker. So this is quite rough here, yeah? so you'll be feathering through this, you know, cutting down your speed, but then you look, there's a pocket of nice ground that's quite smooth, you can grab the brakes a lot harder to slow you down quicker. So I'll be slowing down a lot more here, then I'll lay off a little bit, still feathering my brakes through this rough section, and then when you get down to this bit right here, look at it, nice and smooth. I can hit the brakes a little bit more here if I'm going too fast, slow myself way down, and then it gets gradually smoother all the way down the trail. So braking is super key when on a hardtail. You don't want to be braking in super rough bits because it's not going to work. Your back wheel's going to be bouncing and chattery everywhere. You're not going to slow down, so it's all about feathering and finding these little pockets of braking pa pat braking pads. So this is the biggest mistake a lot of people do do, and that is not using the full potential of the hardtail. And that is by generating a lot more speed, gaining a lot more flow on the trail, and that is pumping. When you're riding a, like a trail like this one right here, you could just roll down, there's a little hill, you can gradually roll down through like a Sunday afternoon, but by bringing in that technique of the pumping to the hardtail, it's the most efficient way to gain more speed out there on the trail. So you've got a roller right here. I can come through and I can pump this, let it glide over, and then look at this. Some would think that's a jump. People would like to get air, and you think I could launch that, but it's not gonna gain you a lot more speed. So what you wanna do is you wanna pump this. So you want to come through, let suck that hump up with the bike, bring the bike up into you, roll over, and pump down as much as you can, because this thing is the king at pumping. Right, the humble hardtail is the best way to get maximum power down to those wheels. Why do you think all them XC racers use hardtails? Because it's the most efficient way to, to transfer that power down to those wheels. But, and it's the perfect way for climbing as well, but when it comes to climbing, there's a few mistakes that people do actually make when climbing with a hardtail. And that is body position on the bike. Especially when it gets a little bit steep and the terrain's quite slippery, if you find yourself 
losing grip on that rear wheel is because you're stood up and all your weight's over the front. You want to get maximum grip on this. So you want to sit back in that saddle. But when you sit back in that saddle, all your body weight's over the back wheel, so your front wheel starts to lift up. So you gotta find the perfect in-between bit. So you're putting a lot more weight on the rear, but you wanna drop your shot, you wanna drop your body, your torso, by bending your elbows, bringing your body weight over the front so you can put weight on the rear, but keep that front down. Right, this next one is not really a mistake. I can't say confidence is a mistake. I think the mistake that we're gonna be looking at is second guessing your skills. Second guessing, can I get through this rough section? Thinking when you get to it, oh no, what was that GMBM video? No, you don't wanna be doing that. You wanna be practicing that skill, gaining your confidence before getting into a section. Be confident with what you've got as a skill on a bike. Confidence comes with time. The more time you ride, the more time you practice on that skill, but even if it's climbing, getting through a rough section like this, doing some big jumps, all of that comes with confidence. and All of that comes with time. Confidence comes with time. Time is practice. Practice makes confidence. It's all a big link. So you gotta be confident in yourself and the skills you've got to navigate through the trail and get through it. Plowing, point and shoot, half full leather, bull in a china shop. Those are the things that you can't actually do on a hard tail when it comes to rough sections, such like rock gardens, because the worst nightmare, my worst nightmare, is rock gardens. I hate them. I try and make them as smooth as possible because it's scary and horrible, and I don't want to puncture. So you've got to find the smoothest line. So this is line choice when it comes to riding a hard tail. I can see two lines here. I'm going to point out the rough one because, yeah, I'm looking for that first because I don't want to hit it. So there's a drop here. There's some rocks here. There's a pointy rock there. That's got puncture all over it. And you got all this rough section through this here. So, on a hardtail, it's gonna be rough no matter what when you're trying to find the smooth line. It's gonna be a little bit rough, but you gotta find the smoothest line. That's the key. So I'm gonna go far right here. I'm gonna go through this section. So I'm not actually doing a drop. I'm riding through this rocky section here. I'm coming, staying far right. It's all smooth here. And I'm trying to go through here and through the trail. I'm trying to make this whole trail smooth as possible. But this example works for everywhere else. On every bit of trail, you want to try and find the smoothest line possible. And you don't want to puncture, because it's not a race at the end of the day. Right, here's a quick example again at line choice. Two lines, smooth line, rough line. Unless you're good at jumping, you can jump this little gap here. If not, you want to have to roll it, and that's rough. But look at this, this smooth line up here. So you want to keep right, then you want to cut in left as well, because you don't want to hit this drop into this rough section here. So you're going right to left, kind of squaring off this turn right here, making it a lot more smoother. Whereas if you're going to go this way, look at that step. You're going to be hitting that, dropping through here. Oh, mess. And your, your arms are going to be going like this. You don't want that. If you can't find any smooth lines, then you've got to create smooth lines. So you've got to visualize smooth lines when you're riding a trail. Take a look at this one. I came through here quite fast and I was like, whoa, and I was in introduced with this. A little dip here, quite steep, aggressive, especially if you're coming in real fast. You've got some roots you're going to be bouncing over. You've got that route there. You've got all this through here. It's quite tight here to your pedals. You could pedal strike that stump or that stump. So, I want to make this bit of trail a lot smoother. So I'm coming in, I know I've got enough speed because it's quite a fast bit of trail through this section. So I'm going to use this little rock ledge jump pad thing and I'm pretty confident with my bunny hop skills and now I can jump. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump this whole thing, land just over past that fourth uh, route there and making this whole section a lot smoother. I want to set up more into that right hander, so I'm going to jump from there, potentially over that stump, into the bank on the, on the left, right is left, sets me up into that right hander, kind of softening up that right hander, a little bit faster. Well, I'm confident. I hate rock gardens. I don't want to get punctured. All right, smooth line. The smooth line is just walking through it, but that's not, that's not it. Watch this. Oh, oh my, oh, 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 wow. 
<laughs> right, if I was on a full suspension bike, that would have been way smoother, but super, like, fun to ride a hardtail out there. And there's a few mistakes and what people actually do when riding a hardtail. Hopefully they've helped you out. If, let me know in the comments down below if you're struggling with anything else or if you want any questions answered. I'm quite happy to answer these questions as best I can or send them to Ask GMBN. If you want to see another rad video just like this one, you want to build your confidence, click just up there, smash the globe. If you haven't subscribed already because you're missing out, we do a video every day of the week. Like it if you love this video and I'll see you in the next one.